Well, what you're looking at is a 1973 white 4000. Um, this was actually our first big rig truck. Uh, purchased this early to mid 1990s, 94, 95, I can't remember. Uh, I think we paid $2,500 for it. And uh, truck truck done pretty good we we even almost got it paid for so uh, we retired it probably uh, maybe 10 years ago I still use it around the farm a little bit leave it hooked to the dump trailer got some battery charger on it we're gonna see if they'll fire up here in a little bit I'm just using one car battery too got a wet kit on it what we did this was the second fuel tank and plumbed, just plumbed it in, took the crossover lines off and welded a fitting in and so we plumbed into our hydraulic pump. Kind of interesting, these old whites had the, there's your foot valve, your trail valve for your brakes. It's got a linkage runs back to it. Ten hundred twenty two tires. On Hendrickson walking beams, naturally. Uh, this truck has a two ninety Cummins, a ten speed Road Ranger, and three seventy ratio, thirty four thousand pound rear ends which at that time that was actually pretty common there was a lot of transit trucks that had that combination not the best setup for a low boy truck which is what we were pulling in a dump trailer but we made it work and something else kind of kooky we ran into if you notice the fifth wheel is is actually set back about a foot from the center line of your spring there my fifth wheel plate sits back we we had to do that because our first low boy it was a 1951 lacrosse and it was a tandem trailer but it had a short neck on it for a single axle tractor so when you're 24 years old and need to use it quickly that's what we did and, and you'd, you'd load the bulldozer and, and uh it was almost like he had power steering and the front end get a little, little bit lighter, about like a wrecker, but, but uh, wasn't too bad. Here's what the inside looks like. I wish I had, I guess I'm as guilty as some other people uh, leaving stuff set outside. If it's, need to build some more sheds and this stuff would last forever, but there's there's your transmission decal and truck and engine information. Decompression lever. We'll we'll use that here in a little bit. We'll see if this thing start. There's your 290 Cummins. It's got a little slight lean to it, and part of it sets inside the cab in a fiberglass enclosure. Uh, I have overhauled overhauled the engine one time. This, this engine probably doesn't have 2,000 miles on overhaul. Uh, and I think I, we, we've put one or two clutches in it, which is kind of normal. But other than that, the truck never did. We never had any rear end trouble, transmission trouble out of it. It's got the can type filter there with an element inside, no spin on. And
glass is still in pretty good shape. It's not fogging up like some of those trucks will do if they sit outside. I do for paint. We'll fix it up here one of these days. Uh, it seemed like uh, we did bump the fuel a little on it. We changed fuel button and I think we were running I think we were running like 175 PSI on the rail pressure and we bumped it to like 195 if I remember right. And it made a noticeable difference. In the this engine has pretty good power. You can't pull it down for an extended period of time because there is no no after cooler. You will melt your pistons down but you know kind of short lug is okay but not a, not a long drawn out. You know you always want to keep your keep your RPMs up on those old non-after cooled engines. Let's see if this thing will blow some smoke. Uh. Pull out my decompression. Because we're only on one battery. Marble rattle. The old Cummins. I love it. truck go back a long ways. A lot of good times. A lot of adventures. Well, we'll see you folks.